Divinity is an amazing game with a massive amount of content to experience, and what's crazy is that today my game got even bigger. In this video, I'm going to start fighting my way through a new campaign using my ridiculous gameplay style, but my options have been expanded significantly because I'm using revamped and even brand new classes created by Odinblade. Odinblade's mods are among the most popular available for Divinity, and they change almost all the skill trees to allow players to really lean into their class's strength and create a satisfying power fantasy. For example, the Scoundrel class has a combo system that creates unique opportunities depending on what order you use your abilities in. The Necromancer class now has spells that sacrifice health in exchange for more powerful effects. And there's so many more changes that I'm really excited to try out. Since I'm playing with mods, I decided to full send it and it activated a bunch of gift bag features too. Check the description if you want to know what got changed. I couldn't resist picking Fane as my main character. He has amazing starting abilities and an incredible bone structure that could win any beauty contest in a heartbeat. Well, if, if, he, if he had a heart to beat. I decided to try out the new Spectre class first, and there's nobody better to try it on than Dallas and friends. They're the perfect test subjects because they have a lot of health and because the Spectre class inflicts a unique status effect called Agony, which stacks five times and deals piercing damage whenever my enemies start their turns. I'm going to escort Dallas to the world's smallest island retreat and inflict agony until she runs with her massive tail between her legs. But first, I made a quick detour to take out some crocodiles and get my gloves of teleportation, which are covered in stomach acid because this big guy ate them. Now that I have my gloves of teleportation, I picked up a bunch of candles and I headed over to pick a fight. I started by putting all the candles down in a line, at least for right now, and I started the battle. Okay, I'm hoping that the candle line is gonna stop Dallas from getting, okay, she stopped. Okay, awesome. Um, now I'm going to use some behind the scenes cheese to get all my test subjects into position. I will be right back. All right, I removed Dallas, Alexander, and the two geists from the fight, and I'll go check in on them in a little bit. But first I'm going to adjust my candle line and turn it into a candle cage. The Spectre class mod also adds scythes to the game that have a weapon ability that damage all enemies in a small area. So grouping the Magisters up like this makes it so I can maximize its effectiveness and I can follow it up with a spell that does essentially the same thing. At the beginning of each turn, my enemies take damage based on how many agony stacks they have, up to five stacks total. So it's important to keep hitting them with spells that inflict agony so that I don't let the stacks drop off because then I have to start stacking again from one. After finishing off the Magisters, I teleported this guy who was helping me into the candle cage for his own protection and then headed over to take out Dallas, Alexander, and the Geists. Not at all! And you. I'll see you soon. Very soon. The Torturer talent is almost essential for the Spectre because it extends the duration of Agony by one turn. So I decided to get some more value out of my Torturer talent by adding Rain Blood to the mix. Torturer will allow Rain Blood to bypass my enemy's physical armor and make them bleed which adds even more piercing damage. I also used a new necromancer ability called Unearth Corpse, which generates a fresh corpse at a location, and I can use that corpse to summon a spectral banshee or a bloated corpse, or maybe both. If you summon the bloated corpse first, it makes it so you're not able to use that same body to summon a spectral banshee, but if you just do the spectral banshee first, you can let the spectral banshee do its thing. When it gets killed, you can use that exact same corpse to summon this ugly thing. Hi, I'm Fane, an undead sorcerer with a bone structure so fine you'd think it was a gift from the gods. Is your afterlife being ruined because dogs can't resist your high quality frame? Are hounds always following you around, driving you crazy? Think there's no answer? You're so stupid. There is. Mutt moving mittens. Finally, there's an elegant, comfortable mitten that can let the living dead live in peace. With mutt moving mittens, those bothersome beasts will be a boat deck away. 
since dogs can't use ladders, you'll be free to pursue your passions without dogs constantly nipping at your heels. So act now and order your mutt moving mittens today because your bones should be your own. All right, that's all the magisters. So now we just need to take care of the dog that has been stuck up on the upper deck and hasn't been able to join the fight at all. And it's attacking Diana. So hopefully she can survive it. She looks like she's got plenty of health still. I think it can only attack twice and it does like 30 damage. So she'll probably be fine. <laughs> Unless she walks away and gets attacked by an attack of opportunity. Is she gonna die? Oh, she's dead. It does. Oh my gosh. Divinity, please. Sometimes this game, I cannot believe that she just got herself killed. I was just cleaning up a few minor fights around the fort to gain the experience so I could get to level four and get access to new abilities. And I was up here fighting these three NPCs that are at the table when my game just decided to crash. I hadn't saved in a while, so I had to go all the way back and redo the Dana fight. So I put the dog a little bit further away. I think since I'm playing with mods, I really need to be saving more often than I have been saving because the game is definitely going to be more likely to crash. It did only crash the one time though. And I hit level four and went and found this guy who has all my Spectre books. And I don't know how, but he's dead. Super dead. So I decided to rush escaping Fort Joy so I can get to Amadia Sanctuary where I'm hoping there's going to be a different version of him to sell me the Spectre books. And I dismissed Sabeel from the party because she doesn't receive full experience when you leave the fort. I think it's a bug. We don't know from whence these beasts came, but we do know source calls them. Now that I've escaped the fort, I invited Sabeel back into my party and she has the correct amount of experience, which is good. And we fast traveled outside the fort and headed over to Amadia Sanctuary. It's actually a bunch of ambushes on the way to Amadia Sanctuary and I didn't want to gain too much experience because I still want to finish up Fort Joy. So I just teleported Sabeel over this little wreckage point here and kind of like went to the back door almost of the Amadia Sanctuary. And fortunately for me, inside of Amadia Sanctuary, there was in fact another version of this uh, custom NPC that Odinblade put in to sell the Spectre books. By the way, Odinblade has a a Ko-Fi page where you can send a tip if you've enjoyed his mods either through playing them or because they made this video possible. I want to figure out how these new skills work so I can figure out which direction to pivot the build for Fane and for Sabeel because I want to pivot their builds in slightly different directions while still keeping Spectre as the base. Fane is using the Pact of Artillery which is really cool. It increases range by four meters but you can't move at all. You're stuck in your place for two turns. And from high ground it's even crazier. I can reach almost everywhere on the ground floor of the entire arena and I can almost hit the other platform. Then I used this ability, Tormented Volley, which uh, automatically targets three different people with projectiles. It does pretty good damage and it also puts a stack of agony on each enemy that it hits. For Sabeel, I wanted to do a more up close and personal build, so I took Rift Walk, which lets you teleport and deal damage and inflict agony when you land. And she still has rain blood, but I'm go I think I'm going to switch that over to Fane since he's going to be the long range caster. I switched Sabeel's weapons over to dual wielded sickles which uh, have this ability that lets them do it's kind of like a whirlwind but it inflicts agony and after experimenting on the enemies in the arena I had a pretty good idea of where I wanted to take their builds to finish off this episode. Fane's build is going to allow him to stay far away from the action and launch spells in that inflict agony on multiple enemies as well as summon reinforcements to either inflict agony or explode on enemies and just generally wreak havoc. While Sabeel 
is going to pivot into having a build that allows her to jump into the fight, afflict agony with a couple different abilities, and every time she uses a scoundrel ability, she gets a point of combo. Combo is used to power up one of the scoundrel abilities to have a larger effect. Once you get to combo three, you just activate the deadly flourish ability and your next scoundrel ability will have whatever the combo effect is that's written on the ability. So for this one, the base ability does plus 20% damage while invisible and the combo makes me turn invisible right before dealing damage. Since it's a scoundrel ability, it can benefit from backstab criticals. So this ended up being a massive hit of damage that absolutely wiped these magisters out. I decided to use these two builds together because it sounded amusing to have one build that really just stands in one spot without moving, and another build that's jumping all over the battlefield, slipping in and out of stealth. The final fight for this video will be against Niles the Fluncer, which always has the potential to be a difficult and chaotic fight. Niles the Fluncer is a total creep. Who are you, you lovely little puppy? Who asks for Atusa's leg, which we have packed away in our pack for completely legitimate reasons. And if you give it to him, then you won't have to fight him. I waited until the moment in the dialogue that I had the option to give him the leg, and then I sent the leg from Fane's inventory over to Sabeel's and had Sabeel eat the leg. As an elf, she can see the memories of the dead when consuming their flesh, so it's really just a part of a balanced breakfast for her. Then you can tell Niles you'll give him the leg, and the game is fooled into thinking he got it, so you can avoid getting attacked by him. With all the peace and quiet, I can just walk right up to Niles and teleport him into a cage with one of his meat golems, completely taking him out of the fight and providing some amusing dialogue from Time him while he's stuck. Damn you! I'll flay you alive! I'll flinch the blubber from your bones! You! Over here! Open this door! I won't say it again. Let. Me. Out! I let Sabeel jump around the fight, inflicting status effects like bleed or agony or ruptured tendons on enemies so that they would take damage over time. And when I felt like I'd done enough, I would try and move on to the next target. Since she still has a couple abilities that inflict agony, she can help Fane add stacks to them more quickly while she's passing by one of his targets. And with her scoundrel abilities, she was pretty much always building up to a really big combo hit. I expected to need to use invisibility a, at least a little bit in this fight, but I really didn't need to at all. Uh, with Niles in the cage and all the meat golems still trying to fight their way out, it was a very, very manageable fight. For Fane, I had him just pick a spot and set up his pact of artillery and try to wreak as much havoc as possible and apply agony stacks as many places as he could. So whether that's unearthing a corpse right in front of this meat golem so he can't get out of his cage and blocking his path or using agony to finish off an enemy that Sabeel got low, whatever Fane was doing, he wasn't moving much. The railings actually made this kind of difficult. I probably could have picked a better spot to set up his artillery, but here we are, this is what I got. My goal for this series is to have shorter videos with just two characters and focus each video in on a specific playstyle and evolve it throughout the video, then completely switch it up in the next video. And of course, to keep using goofy or ridiculous strategies as much as I can, though obviously not quite the level of absurdity you see in my longer videos. So please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this first video and think I should keep it going, or if there's any changes you'd like to see. Maybe you think I should turn Lone Wolf off or add a challenge constraint to the run. Whatever it is, let me know. See ya. I won't say it again. I won't say it again. I won't say it again. Out! 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 Out!